In this video, you're going to learn what the MERN stack is. We're going to set up a new project, build out the back end, the front end, and connect to MongoDB. If you want to follow along, there is a written version of this tutorial, and the full code is available on GitHub. There's a link in the video description. So what is the MERN stack? Well, stack refers to a combination of technologies. Now the MERN stack consists of MongoDB, Express, React, and Node.js. And there are other similar variants like the MEAN stack, which swaps out React for Angular. Now in the MERN stack, we use MongoDB to create the database layer, Node.js and Express to make up the middle or application layer, and React to implement the presentation layer. In this MERN stack tutorial, we're going to utilize these four technologies to develop a basic application that's able to record the information of employees and then display it using a React front end. So to get started, we're going to use Node.js version 20 plus and a code editor. Now for this tutorial, I'll be using Visual Studio Code and these are both free downloads as well. Now MERN lets us create a full stack solution. And for this project, we're going to create both a back end and a front end. The front end we're going to implement with React and the back end we're going to implement with MongoDB, Node.js, and Express. So we're going to call the front end client and the back end server. So again, I'm using VS Code and I'm in my terminal. Uh, there are many different ways to go about this. You could use the UI if you want, uh, but we're going to start by creating an empty directory. We're going to call it MERN. So I'm going to make dir MERN and then CD into MERN. Next, we'll create a folder for the back end and we'll name that server. So make dir server and then cd into server. Now let's initialize this project by typing npm init y and that will give us a package JSON. So if we look over at our folders, we'll see server and then package JSON. Now, in order to use ECMAScript modules, the officially supported standard format to package JavaScript code for reuse, we're going to add a line to this package JSON. So we're going to add type is going to equal module. So this will allow us to use ES modules instead of common JS. And we can close that, go back into the terminal, and then let's install the rest of our dependencies. So we're going to npm install MongoDB and express and cores. So MongoDB, of course, is going to install the Node.js MongoDB database driver that was going to allow our application to connect to our database and work with our data. And then Express is a web framework for Node.js, and it's just going to make our lives easier here. And then Cores is a package for cross-origin resource sharing. All right, now that we have our dependencies installed, let's create another file here. We'll say touch server.js. In this file, we'll import Express, Cores, and Records, which we'll create in just a minute. We're also going to set our port. It's going to come from our environment variables, or we'll set it to 5050 if that's missing. We'll get our express server going with cores and then use those records. And then finally listen on our port and then just console log that the server is running and it's listening on that specific port. Now it's time to connect our server to our database. And we're going to use MongoDB Atlas as our database. Atlas is our cloud-based database service. Now, MongoDB Atlas provides a free tier cluster that never expires, doesn't require a credit card, and it lets you access a subset of Atlas features and functionality. Now, to get you started with Atlas, if you don't already have your cluster set up, we have a video for you to watch there. So pause this video, go back and watch that one, and come back if you haven't already set up your cluster. So this is my cluster. I'm going to go to my database that I've already set up, and I'm going to go to Connect, and then select Drivers. And we're going to use Node.js, of course. And this is my connection string. So I'll copy that. Now my connection string is going to be different from your connection string. So now that you have your connection string, we'll go back to our server directory and we're going to create a file called config.env. So let's create a new file here, config.env. And we're gonna create a new variable in here and assign it our connection string. So I'm gonna call this variable atlas underscore URI and then paste in my connection string. Now in here, you'll notice that we have our username and our password. So be sure to change this with your password. And then after this, we're going to create another variable. We're going to call it port and we're going to set it to port 5050 and then save this file. Now to set up our database, we're going to add another file. We're going to actually add a folder and a file. So we're going to add a folder called db and then connection.js. 
and this should actually be in the server directory. So let's make sure that that is set up properly. So it should be mern server and then db and then connection.js. Now I've just pasted this code in here, so let's review it. We're going to import the Mongo client and server API version from MongoDB. We're going to get our Atlas URI from the environment variable that we just created. And then we're going to create our client, which is going to create a new Mongo client, passing it that URI, as well as some extra options. Below this, we have a try catch where we're going to connect, and then we're going to await our client.db, which we're connecting to the admin database, and we're going to send the command ping. This is just so that we can confirm that we've successfully connected. So then we'll console log that we are successfully con connected. And then of course, if there's an error, we'll catch that. Finally, we're going to get our employees database and then export that. Now don't worry if you don't already have an employees database set up. This is going to create it automatically for us if it's not already there. So be sure to save that file and then you can close it. All right, the database is done, the server is done, and now it's time for the API endpoints. So let's start by creating a new folder and file for that. So again, under server, let's be sure to do that. And then let's create a new folder called routes and then a file called record.js. So I've pasted this in here. Let's go over that. Again, we're going to import express here. We're going to bring in our connection file that we just created to connect to our database. We're also going to import this method from MongoDB called object ID. That's just going to help us to convert the IDs to a string from the underscore ID field. Then we're going to create our router, which is an instance of the express router. And then we're going to set up our various API endpoints. So this first endpoint here is going to be a get route at slash. And then within this, we'll have an async function that has our request and our response. We're going to get our collection, which is going to be records. And then we're going to do a find all on that collection. So find everything and return that as an array. And so that will be our results. So we're going to res.send and then set the status to 200. The next route will allow us to get a single record. So instead of getting all records, this one is just going to get a single record. Again, this is a git and it's going to be the slash and then the ID. So now anything after the slash is going to be a string which would represent the ID. So here we'll get our collection again. And then we're going to set our query as going to equal uh, a new object ID, which is going to come from our request.params.id. And then we'll do a collection.find1 and pass in that query. Now, if we don't have any results, then we'll say it was not found and a status of 404. Uh, otherwise, we're going to send the results back with a status of 200. Now, the next route is going to allow us to create a new record. So this is going to be a post route as opposed to a get route. It's going to be to slash as well. Now in here we have a try catch. We're going to create a new document object. And in this document, we're going to have a name, a position, and a level. And we're going to get these values from our request body. So request.body name, dot body position, and level. Again, we'll get our collection, which is records. And then we're going to insert one we're going to insert that new document that we created here. And the result is going to be sent and with a status of 204. And if we have an error, we'll send a status of 500 and just say that there was an error adding the record. Now the next uh, API endpoint is going to be a patch, which will allow us to update a record. So it's going to be to slash ID. So again, this is an individual record. So we're going to uh, create our query here. Underscore ID is going to be new object ID, which we're going to get from the request params.id. So it's going to pull that string from the string that we have after our slash in our URL. We're going to create our query here, which we're going to name updates. So here we're going to use the dollar set operator to set the name, position, and level to the new values that we're getting from our request body of name, position, and level. So again, we'll get our collection, and then we're going to uh, use our collection update one, send it our query along with the updates. So it's going to find this one record uh, that we identified here in our query, and it's going to pass along those updates. We're going to send the results and then a status of 200. If we have an error of, again, we'll have a status of 500 and say there was an error updating the record. And then our last endpoint is going to be the delete route. 
So this is going to be a delete, of course, and then it's going to be to a specific ID. Again, we're going to query by that ID. We'll get our collection, and then we'll say delete one based on that query. We'll send the results, and if we have an error, we'll send an error. And finally, we'll export the entire router so that it can be used by Express. So again, if we go back to our main server file, this is where we're pulling in our records for our routes, and then we're initializing it right here. So notice here we have slash record. This allows us to identify an initial path. So anything at slash record, and then after that will be these records. So for instance, to find a specific record by ID, it would be something like slash record, and then slash one, two, three, four, if that is the, uh, the records ID. If we wanna get all records, then it would just be slash record. So let's open up our terminal and run the application and see what happens. So here we'll run node and then dash dash env dash file equals config.env and then server. Now server is the name of the file that we created for our server, server.js. And then notice that we're also using the built-in environment variable functionality of the latest versions of Node.js. So let's run this and we'll see pinged your development server. You successfully connected to MongoDB, so that's good and it's listening on port 5050. So now our back end is working and it's time to move over to building out the front end. So for the front end, we're going to use Vite. That's a modern way to create React applications. So let's create a new terminal. I'm gonna CD into the MERN folder. So here we're going to npm create v at latest. We're going to name our uh, front end client. And then we're going to use a template, which is the React template. Super quick, let's CD into client now, and then npm install. We get all of those uh, dependencies installed. And now there are some additional dependencies that we need. Here we'll npm install dash D is uh, for the dev dependencies. We're going to install Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer. And then we're going to npx Tailwind CSS init dash P. That's going to initialize our Tailwind config. So let's go over into our client directory now, and we have a tailwind.config.js file. And we're just going to set this up for Vite. Here in content, we're going to add our index.html, and then the rest of these files in the source directory for tailwind to monitor. And then in the source and then index.css file, we're going to delete all of the boilerplate here and then just paste in our Tailwind base components and utilities. So Tailwind is a utility first CSS framework that allows us to add CSS styles by utilizing predefined class names. It's just really easy to work with in my opinion. Now back in our terminal, the last thing we're going to install is React Router DOM. So npm install as a dev dependency React Router DOM. And React Router adds client side page routing to React. Now let's go over to our source folder in under client and then our main.jsx file. And we're gonna update this. So we're going to import React DOM and create browser router and router provider from React Router DOM. We have our main app component and we'll have a record and a record list component, which we'll create in just a bit. And then of course our CSS. So we're going to first set up our router. So we're going to have different pages. We'll have a page that shows all of our records will have a page that allows us to add records, a page that allows us to update records. And so this is where we're gonna set this up under create browser router. So the slash route or root route is going to display our app and it's also going to have children. So the child of slash is going to be our record list which shows all of our records. After that, we'll have our edit route which is going to have an ID. In that, again, we'll have our main app route but the child of this one is going to be our record. So it only shows a single record. And then the create route is pretty much the same. It's gonna be create, and then it shows that single record. And once we move over into our app component, you'll see uh, how these are laid out. So then we have our React DOM create root, and then we render our React components in our root element. Uh, and then we have our router provider, which is then passing in our router. So again, this is going to display our app and then the optional children. 
So again, React Router helps us to seamlessly transition uh, while switching between components. And basically it will only uh, reload or refresh the component that needs to be changed instead of refreshing or reloading the entire page. Now, though React Router is not a necessity, it is a must have uh, when you're building a responsive application like this in React. All right, next let's create some components. So in the source folder here, we're going to create a new folder called components. And then let's create a file called navbar.jsx. All right, the only thing that we'll import is the nav link from React Router DOM. That's because this navbar is going to be linking to the other pages in our application. So it's pretty simple. We have uh, a nav here and then our two nav links. Our first nav link is just going to be an image and that is going to be our logo. And then the second link is going to be a button that says create employee. All right, let's create our next component under components. We'll create a new file and we're going to name it record uh, list. JSX. Okay, so this component is going to list out all of our existing records. So we're going to use a use effect and use state from React. And we'll also import link from React Router DOM. So first, we're going to set up each individual record, which will then uh, display further down. So we have our table set up, we've got table rows and columns here that are going to display our record name, position and level. After that, we'll have a couple of buttons. Uh, one is a link that is going to allow us to edit this record. And the other one is going to be a button that allows us to delete this record. So let's go down and take a look at the, uh, the actual component here of record list. So we're going to set up a use state of records and set records. And then we will have a use effect here. So the use effect is going to get our records from our backend. So now we're actually connecting and using that backend that we created. So again, we're running this locally. So we set this to localhost 5050 slash record. And remember the root route is going to fetch all records. So if there is no response, okay, we're going to then console error a message. Otherwise we're going to get our records and then set our records in our use state. And since this is an async function in a use effect, uh, we set it up this way and then run it. And then we set the dependency to Records.length. So if an additional record comes in, this will run again. The next method we have here will allow us to delete a record. So again, we're going to our localhost 5050 record, and then we're passing in the ID. Now notice here that the method here is delete. So then we'll filter that record out of our state and then set records to the new state that does not include this record that we just deleted. And then finally, we'll map these records out to a list here. So record list, we're going to map through our records and then use our record component that we created at the top of this file. We'll pass in our record and then the delete record function here. And of course, set a key and then return the whole thing. So this is going to return an H3 that says employee records. And then within that, we'll have our table and um, we'll set up our headers here, name, position, level, and action and then pass in the entire set of records. No matter however many there are, it's going to map through them and then display each table row. All right, the next component that we're going to set up is record.jsx. So let's create a new file here, call it record.jsx. And now this component is going to allow us to either create a new record or update an existing record. So we have our use state, use effect, we're going to also pull in use params and use navigate from React Router DOM. So we have our record component here. We're going to set up our initial state, which is going to be a form and set form. And we'll have our name, position, and level in here uh, initially set to blank. And then we need to identify whether we're creating a new record or updating an existing record. So we're going to create the state that is is new and set is new. And the default is true. So by default, this is going to be a brand new record. We're going to get our params from use params and navigate from use navigate. We'll set up our use effect here, and this is going to fetch data. So first of all, we're going to get our ID from params.id, set that to a string. And if it's not there, we'll set it to undefined. So again, if uh, we are updating an existing 
record, then the ID will be there. If we're creating a new record, there won't be an ID. So if there's not an ID, let's just return and not do anything in this use effect. If there is an ID, then we're going to set is new to false because we're updating something. And then we're going to get the data for this existing record. So we're going to fetch from localhost record and then get that ID. And if uh, the response okay is, is not okay, then we're going to send an error message. Uh, if it is, we'll get that uh, record. And if for some reason we didn't find the record, uh, we'll do a warn and just say that that record was not found. Otherwise, we're going to set form and pass in that record. So we then fill in the form with that record's details. So we're going to run that fetch data function that we just looked at up, up here. And we're going to also set our dependencies of params.id and navigate. We have another method here that we'll set up to update the form. So every time the form updates, we're going to set form uh, and then just pass in the previous value and the new value. So every time uh, this runs, our form will be updated. And then we have our on submit. So when our form is submitted, let's prevent the default and then create a person object here from the form uh, information. We'll create a response object. And then we're going to do uh, one of two things. If this is a new record, uh, if is new is true, then we're going to post our new record. There's a post method here. We're going to post our new record to our backend. If this is not a new record, that means it's an update. Then we're going to patch our existing record and pass in that record ID in the URL here. And in each of these, we have our body, which is then passing in the data from our form. All right. So then, of course, if uh, there's an error, we'll throw an error there. Uh, we have another catch here that throws an error if something happens. And then finally, when we're done submitting, uh, we want to reset our form, set everything back, back to blank and then navigate back to our root directory. All right, finally, we're just going to return the entire form here. So we have an H3 that says create update employee record. Then we have our form. We have our on submit uh, function that we just looked at here. We have our employee info. And then here is uh, a label here of name for the input that is just below here. So this is the name input. Every time this input changes, we uh, call the update form, which is going to then you know, update the value of this input. Same thing for the next input. We have our label for position and our actual position input, which has the same on change. And lastly, we have uh, our input for our radio group, which is going to allow us to choose from either uh, the position of intern, junior, uh, or senior. And then we have our submit button at the bottom. All right, so now let's pull all of this together. Let's go over to the app.jsx file. And this is the default uh, boilerplate uh, template that we installed. Let's highlight all of that and change it out to this, a little bit simpler. Uh, so we have our outlet, which we're pulling in from React Router DOM. And then we're pulling in our navbar component that we created earlier. We have our app component, which is going to return our navbar. So our navbar is going to be on every single page. And then the outlet are the components that we set as children in our main.jsx file. Remember, if we go over to main.jsx, we have these children here. So app is rendered really on every path. And that is going to allow us to render that header here at the top. The outlet is pulled from these child elements. So we have our record list and then our record element on these other paths. So this is how all of that is going to be displayed to our front end. All right, let's see it in action. Now, I already have my server running. So I have this terminal here where the server is already listening on port 5050, and it's connected to MongoDB. So now in my client terminal, I'm going to run npm run dev to get the uh, client up and running. And let's go to localhost 5173. All right, so I already have some records in here. So that's why it is uh, displaying these records here. We can edit and delete these records, or let's go ahead and, and create a new employee here. So we have our form with our employee info. So we're going to say, we'll say John Doe, uh, we'll say developer and intern, and then save the employee. And there we go. Now we could edit the employee and we'll say, 
uh, John Doe again, and we can delete the employee, and that's it. If I refresh the page, you'll see that it's still pulling that same information. Congratulations on building your first MERN application. Now, for more ideas and advanced concepts, go visit our Developer Center. There's a link in the video description. And if you have any questions, go to our community forums. There's a link in the video description. Now, if this video was helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more MongoDB content.